everyone, welcome to Work Love Wednesday. Daisy and Smelter here for Work Love Wednesday. We are, it is time for Work Love Wednesday. Hi everyone, welcome to Work Love Wednesday. It's been a while since I've done a Work Love Wednesday. Um, I think I was just looking at the videos. It's been at least six months. Um, and if you've never watched Work Love Wednesday, Work Love Wednesday was basically like almost a year-long experiment of me seeing about doing live video streaming and just getting used to it and getting used to being in front of the camera, which I'm so grateful for because now, with everything that's happening, um, definitely have had to um, be in front of the camera, be on video conferencing. And in fact, I think, where was I sharing this? Oh, I was sharing this in my college course, but my kindergartner is doing video virtual learning and video conference calls, and she's like freaking out. Like it's very nerve wracking for her to be on these video conference calls, which I totally, totally get. Um, because I was definitely there before as well. So Work Love Wednesday, bringing it back. Uh, Work Love Wednesday originally came out when, um, I don't know, like most things that evolve, I just kind of start doing it because somebody told me that. I had a mentor who said, stop planning and just let them happen. And so that's what I'm, I'm doing. Um, but now, um, during this time, there is a... I don't know. It just felt like it was time to bring Work Love Wednesday back. Number one, because of the lack of the ability to connect except for email and phone calls and occasional Zoom calls that I have the privilege of being on. Um, so this is just another mode to kind of connect and reach out and share. And so as you watch now or you watch later, make sure you say hello in the chat box so I can see who you are and say hello. And um, the other piece of this is in the last 24 hours uh, as I've been reaching out and touching base with a couple of people and seeing how they're doing I've heard them resonating and relating to me in regards to being stressed out so during this time where we're allowed to be at home um, you know it's not it's not a staycation in fact it is a very stressful time for a lot of reasons. There's the great unknown that's happening, um, but then on top of that, there's just a lot of added responsibility. I mean, I know that I'm at home now, um, kind of functioning as a homeschooler, which never really anticipated that happening. So homeschooling my, my children, I'm trying to run my business, I'm trying to help my husband work on his business uh, and give him time so he can take care and do what he needs to do. Um, he's in the finance world, so not like there's any stress going on there. Um, but, and then taking care of the household in general and just kind of do normal things, you know, keeping the house clean. Um, it, it's just, it's a lot. Uh, and it feels very overwhelming. Have any of you been feeling overwhelmed? Um, I hope that I'm not the only one who feels like they've been overwhelmed recently. Um, but it just seems like a lot. In fact, uh, it was funny because Josh and I were talking actually last night about how we thought that the days would kind of drag on. But in fact, for me, they feel like they just start to go faster as I kind of get into this new level of normal and create these schedules. It's just like there's the days are going faster and um, there's not enough time to do anything that I want to do for myself. So I have these like great ambitions of working on myself, of uh, doing all these things that I thought I never had time for, and I still don't have time for them. Um, and it's just, it's, it's an interesting thought. So anyways, I wanted to bring back Work Love Wednesday. I wanted to come back every Wednesday at 4 p.m. That's when I'm going to come on at live. And then obviously the video will be available for anybody who wants to watch it later on. But I want to come back and talk about things that are going on. I want to share with you. I want to collect things that I'm seeing throughout the weeks that are just interesting things to kind of share with the rest of you. If you have interesting things to share, you know, uh, email them to me or um, 
come and sign on at four o'clock and make sure you share those with us as well. Um, but on top of that, I want to give two kind of tools that I use on a regular basis, but share them with all of you. One of which is uh, my love for intuitive tool sets. Um, one of which that I love to use are Oracle decks and tarot cards, but I love to use them as reflection tools. Very similar to my good friend Tony Hernandez and the Points of You deck that he is a certified trainer for. Those generate some really awesome prompts and I think I just find them very inspirational and they allow us by creating these abstract Im images, providing these abstract images or signs to think about things differently. And I think now more than ever we need to be able to have fluidity in our ability to process things, absorb things, and have an understanding for what's currently happening and what it means in our world. Um, and when I say in, in our world, you can put that on a huge perspective, but I also mean that in the perspective of just you. So, um, so I want to do that. I want to take you through an intuitive tool set. The other piece that I want to do is I want to leave you with some relaxation techniques. So I want to do that every week by helping you regulate your energy. So um, a lot of you know this. If you don't know, I've been studying for the last year um, traditional Chinese medicine in the form of medical Qigong. And then before that, I took a couple classes where I got certified in yin yoga, which is another form of traditional Chinese medicine as well, dealing with the energy meridians. And I'm very passionate about uh, taking care of your energy <laughs> and even more so now because it's also a link to your immune system but one of the things that go hand in hand is when we are stressed um, the way our body has to react when we are stressed it uh, basically leaves our immune system vulnerable so with all the things that are happening right now if you are feeling stressed which I know I am it's very important that we find ways to make our immune system stronger. And obviously, you know, washing your hands and getting good um, night's sleep, all those things are important as well. But um, there are some other things that we can do uh, to make it stronger. And that is in regards to maintaining our energy. So, um, so yeah, so let's go through kind of the two things that I wanna make sure I bring you every week in addition to sharing. Uh, any thoughts or just really cool things that I see throughout the week. So I'm going to start like a little curated collection that I'll bring to you every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Um, so intuitive skill sets, uh, this intuitive decks per se. Uh, the one that I'm going to be pulling from today is this one here. It's the Spirit Song Tarot um, by Paulina Cassidy. And this deck here I just absolutely loved the images so the images really are what caught me I found it actually in a store and I just thought it was beautiful um, for our intuitive skill sets our skill why do you saying that our intuitive deck sets that I want to use for work love Wednesday I want to use I have a whole slew of animal decks because um, animals are near and dear to my heart they are so very powerful symbols to me. Um, I think I'm wearing, yeah, I think I, I am. I'm wearing my penguin earrings. I can't turn them the right way. Can you see that? Penguins. Other way. There we go. Penguin earrings. Um, so I, they have a lot of meaning to me. In fact, all the tattoos that I have are of animals <laughs> because they're very powerful symbols. So I'm going to use animal decks and kind of pick like a, animal of the day or week or reflection animal to kind of think about and so when you think about these decks they really are just a random way to generate a reflection that connects with your inner guidance or your intuition which is a muscle that we all have that are linked to some senses that we all have that people always ask me how to make them strong that muscle is seeing how this resonates with you. So I'll just say this out there and I say this all the time. If you're watching this portion, you are meant to watch this portion. Portion When you see this card, you are meant to see this card. And however it sits with you and it resonates with you or uh, it reacts within you is the way that it's meant to react within you. So let's go ahead and pull. 
our animal of the day. Exciting. So I have to say that before I reveal this animal of the day, the other reason why I really um, was inspired to pick animals is because I do pick animals in relation to a lot of my projects. So for example, the one that most of you know is Unstuck You. Its mascot is, and if you know, you can probably tag it in the chat box now, but I'll tell you, it's the Flamingo. <laughs> and um, at the Leadership Ideology Program, the uh, animal is a lion. And in, what's the other one? Oh, the heart center. The heart center is a phoenix, so even fantasy-driven kind of animals. But all animal-related. And wow, you just can't make this up. Look at what the... Look at the animal. I did not even plan that. I randomly pulled it from the deck. It's craziness. Crazy. Absolutely craziness. Um, so this is the animal, which is the flamingo. So we're going to read the description of the flamingo. It has down below... Uh, the words of charm and passion. Um, boo -boo -boo. Let's see, find the shells here. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Feathers, queen. And let's go. Night of shells. Here we go. The flamingo. So the flamingo is our animal of the week. Let's say that. Um, so the flamingo is a messenger of love and good news, says Paulina, who is the author of this. So each oracle deck or tarot cards comes with its own uh, little description book of the intuitive meaning that the author has gained from every image that they've set, the intention they've set and put into this deck. So this is from Paulina Cassidy's intent for this animal. So the flamingo is a messenger of love and good news. The flamingo's heart leads the way in helping you to act upon your dreams, graceful and charming. He's your enthusiastic guide in helping you follow your bliss, unearth your inner gifts, and seize an opportunity. Be receptive to your emotional energies as they will bring your vision to life. As you work towards achieving your ambitions, be open to exploring your passions. Life is a stream of opportunity. Seek new sources of inspiration and remain focused along the way. So a beautiful message for today, um, and I will say that that encompasses a lot why the Flamingo is the mascot for Unstuck You. I'm always flattered by the amount of Flamingo pictures I get tagged in and sent, and I do love Flamingos, um, but that mascot is really geared towards the people who feel called to take the Unstuck You program. Um, it's to help them unlock inside them those inner dreams and that inner potential. Um, but for me right now, you know, reading that message, one of the things that I'm really truly grateful for in this moment of time, and actually I just got off a team call today with the Leadership Arts team um, and talking about how in January we launched something called the Heart Center, which is truly a heart-filled project for me. It's the work that I want to do. It's the work that's a lot threaded through this idea of bringing Work Love Wednesday back. And I haven't had the opportunity to really pursue it because there have been other professional opportunities that um, have been really important and great and excellent. And um, I wasn't ready to let go. And I thought I could do everything. And I could not do everything. I have to make a priority to do my passion and to follow my dreams. Um, if I want to write another book, i got to make time to write that other book. If I want to launch a new program, I need to make time to launch that program and set aside other programs that maybe are not my passion any longer. They're not that full heart-filled moment for me anymore. Um, and so this has allowed me to kind of do that, really prioritize, <laughs> do the things that I have to do, but really examine you know, what is the work when I only have so much time during the day because there was this assumption to me that we're going to have all this time. I don't have all this time. I have still a finite amount of time um, and what am I going to use that for? Um, 
you know, when am I going to choose not to be with my children and focus on my work? And it's got to be worth it. And so I've been doing a lot of work on the Heart Center, so much so that we got an online platform launched. So I started last night teaching live yin yoga classes and recording them. So now there's a class library, and that's free for the next two weeks. So if you're interested in that at all, they're called the Energy Cultivation Classes on the website. So if you go to leadershipisart.com, click on um, Calendar, and under Upcoming Events, you can click on there and check that out. The other thing is, is I have a workshop that I'm running on Friday that's free, live. It's hosted live at 9 a.m., 12 p.m., and 3 p.m. It is the Heart, 10, Heart Healing 101 workshop, and it's going to give you a lot of the tools that I've picked up through my studies in, tra in traditional Chinese medicine and spiritual aspects and how I've been combining them to create this restorative practice so that we can show up at our best and do the work that we're meant to do, which I call that heart healing, which is when we do it in the professional context to really help us show up at our full potential, at our best. So I have that coming up too, and you can find that too at leadershipisart.com. Uh, click on calendar and under upcoming events, and I'll make sure to tag those as soon as I close this out in the replay so that you can find those easily as well. Um, but I've been able to do that. <laughs> That's all been in two weeks, and I've struggled for months to help make that happen. Um, and so I am grateful for this pause that has, with all of its uncertainty, with its all other you know, forms of new stress, given me the ability to really choose what is significant enough to still be a priority during this time. So there's your animal of the today. Of today, if you're um, willing to share how that message or th thoughts that came through your mind as I read the message from the book from uh, Paulina Cassidy resonated with you, please share those in the comments. You know, this is the way that we get to connect. Uh, if you don't want to share them there, but you would be willing to let me share them next week, please, please um, go ahead and uh, email me. So I'll make sure I put my email in the in the comments too. Um, but yeah. All right. So the last thing that I want to leave you with is just a little bit of a stress reliever. Uh, this was the class that I was running online called Inner Tunings. Uh, it's a form of Qigong that's all about regulating energy. So when we regulate our energy, it helps to bring us balance. Uh, it's the last thing that we do in any kind of Qigong practice to make sure that you're grounded enough and balanced enough and that you don't have any energy anywhere else. Uh, it's a great way to calm down and bring anxiety down as well. So um, we're going to do a very basic practice that is called uh, the microcosmic orbit. Um, so you can do this seated. You don't have to do any funky. And I'm going to take my glasses off so I'm more comfortable. So what we're going to do is basically for the microcosmic orbit, we're going to run our energy up this invisible channel slash cycle. That's going to start at your lower, uh, lower abdomen, your lower dantian is what we call it in traditional Chinese medicine, which is right below your belly button. And we're going to run it up the back, so it's going to travel up the spine and over the head. So you actually push it down from your lower dantian, your lower abdomen. It's going to go underneath you and then travel up your spine, over your face, and then like a warm waterfall, trickling down your face back down. So you're going to feel this energy traveling around this orbit. Okay? So you're going to just close your eyes, focus on abdominal breathing. So when each inhale, the belly is getting bigger and it's getting smaller making the breath slow, long and deep, feeling the energy going down, going up the spine, over the face, and back down. And you can even use your hands almost like training wheels to feel the energy traveling up and back down and back up and back down, and up, and down. 
slowly. You don't want to try to make your energy cycle too quickly because it will throw you off balance. Just like a slow stream. Gently traveling river. Energy. Do two more cycles. Bring the energy down in front of you, back to the lower abdomen, allowing that energy to settle down in that lower abdomen, that lower dantian, which is your reservoir that's with energy that you have that's extra that you store to be used when you call upon it. Anytime we do any sort of energy practice, it shakes you up almost like a snow globe. So this is that settling of the snow. Notice how your body feels. You can gently open your eyes. And thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Don't forget to share with me in the comments or email me. Um, and maybe I'll see you in one of the energetic cultivation classes this week or next week or in the Heart Healing 101 workshop on Friday. Take care, everyone. Stay healthy.